All right, we got a lady in the house. We need to switch gears. <laughs> I've been so good. If you guys would just know how I am, I've been so good. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I could let loose. It's not good. Okay. <laughs> Ken knows. All right, rainbow trout. Man, when we do something for rainbow trout, guys, it goes crazy, a.k.a. the Yabby. I'm so sick of Yabby odors, I could puke, but it's good for my wallet. The Yabbies, the little crawdads. Did you see that show we did? All right. Same rules are going to apply here. It's like I'm doing the same seminar for the last four days. Because it's all the same. What you have to understand about a trout... Well, what I need to understand is I need to go to my local store and I need to get the jar of power bait and I roll it into an eighth inch ball and I put it on a hook and I got my egg sinker and I throw it out and I wait. No, that's not what you need to realize. You need to realize that a rainbow trout is an aggressive predator. He is an aggressive predator. He will chow on lots of things, especially the big ones. Well, no, you got to throw a number 22 elk hair caddis out, and that'll bring them up. Well, that's pretty, but no. Trout guys <clears throat> do some crazy things. I'll give you an example. Out fishing Hayden last year. Mickey and I are out there doing a show. I'm throwing a jig and pig. Remember that when we showed the bass? Big old bulky thing with a hunk of pork on the back of it for a bass. Nine-pound rainbow. I set the hook like I'm in the, you know, the competition, Whoa. and up comes this rocket, like, whoa, hey, what is this? <laughs> On a jig and pig. Now, that's pretty crazy. We went back out, we're fishing the small grubs, fishing the docks, more about, what, Nick, two days later? Two days later, a seven-pounder and a 13-pounder fishing for bass under docks with a little grub. Well, everybody else out in the middle of the lake, trolling around. Night fishing with Chad. <clears throat> this happened to me every time we've gone. Night fishing with Chad, you guys seen him, big walleye. Big swim bait, right? Go through the bait, Chad throws out, hooks up. Whoa, what is that? It's a trout. Bring it in on that six inch swim bait. There is a rainbow trout on the end of it. They're not. Fussy. They eat a lot. What your approach has to be with them is to don't treat them like a little delicate creature. It's so pretty. Get after it with them. The drop shot. Big crankbaits. They'll eat it. What you have to understand is just like the Lakers, when do I do what and why do I do it? Emails have been rolling in. Why is Roosevelt so bad? Why is the fishing so bad? Well, we've done three trout shows down there. It's been pretty good. Not saying pat myself on the back, but what I'm saying is that here's what happened. A lot of those fish went out and they released them out of the pens. They had high water. They all got blown to Portland. Yeah, some did go, I'm sure. What people are failing to do is they go out and I'm going to tell you this right now, and you're going to understand it from here on out. If I am zipping a lure through the water, there's a famous angler around here that says he trolls at four to five miles an hour. If you've read articles. Uh, four to five, great, whatever. At least he's not doing 2.2. <laughs> if I go ripping by you with a bait, and... You're in the mood, you're going to reach up, you're going to grab it. But you got to be on your best, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not on your best, your belt size is too big, and you just want a nice, subtle offering, what are you going to eat? Something that's zipping by your face or something that's dangling in front of you? Easy to get, right? Mm -hmm. Easy to get. Does that mean I can go out all the time and drop shot bat or trout? No, it doesn't. What that means is, is you have to know when I need to do what. If you go down to Roosevelt and I'm down there fishing and I see you trolling 
And it's any time from October through January. I'm going to drive out there. I'm going to make you hold your hand out, and I'm going to slap it with a ruler. <laughs> Remember the lake trout? Remember? Same thing going on here. A buddy of mine on the show, Mike Superfly Allen, the troll master, mother minnow, yellow, 50 feet a liter, 173 feet total. We went down and did a show. I said, Mike, man, I want to make some fun out of this. You hook them on that lead core line, man, and it's just like, it's trying to pull, but it can't. You know, there are fish that are anywhere from 16 to, you know, good ones, 24 inches, sometimes bigger if you get a triploid. I said, you know what, Mike? We did that show. We caught some decent fish. So we're going to come back down here, and I'm going to take you drop shotting. And we went back down drop shotting, and now that's all he wants to do. You got light line, six-pound test. Same setup we talk about in the video, the small bass minnow, the small hook. And you just wail on them. And it's fun, man. They rip line, they jump. They're all over the place. Here's what you have to understand. You got 150 miles river. Okay, Seth, so how do I figure it out? It's just like any body of water. An example, we went down to do a Sidewinder planer board show. And it was a little past. If I'm going to troll guys down there on the surface, you know, trying to do a show, show you the board, show you some options, I'm doing it in October. Maybe the first week of November, I'll run my boards. And you can catch fish. If I'm going down and I just want to really hammer fish, what you have to pay attention to is how the wind's been blowing. If you go out and you listen to the guys on Pond Ray, Kootenai Lake that are good, you'll hear them say every now and then, hey man, I just went by a big old tree floating, or I seen some weeds, or I seen a hay bale. I heard a guy say a hay bale. I caught man, it was a hay bale. I'm like 10 years, what the heck's a hay bale? What the heck? This guy's been drinking too much sauce. Okay? What I came to learn, it's all about current. And current on a lake and what it does to the water. Now obviously on a lake, it, current is generally caused by either the letdown of the water, correct? If they're drawing it down, or from wind. We went down to do this planter board show. It was cold. I don't know, 12 degrees. It was something like that. It was nasty. Lines were icing up. We started trolling. I always pick up fish on the shoreline. But like I said, it was in about the 1st of January. It was a little later than normal. So we trolled, and we went, I don't know, an hour, trying different plugs, going through my progressions. Caught one fish. Fish was right on the shoreline. I told Mickey and, and my dad and Mike, I said, let's pull up. I got an idea. So we went down, and the river does this, kind of just... This kind of does, and this is really big perspective right here. And you're going to see how the two, the two different types of current come into play here. And over in here, we got a big old rock wall, we got a big old rock wall here, and this is like all solid rock. And then in, behind, in here, we got big old sand. And over here, we got a whole bunch of sand. And this is kind of a knobby little hill and a bunch of sand in here. Okay, so we've got solid rock, solid rock. Solid rock all the way around. Big old sands dropping in here. Okay? Here and here. Come around the corner. Immediately start noticing there's a ton of pine needles and crap in the water. So we say, all right. I said, all right. We need to get this planter board show done. Threw out the boards. I went about 10 minutes, and I was so tired of getting stuff off my line. I said, forget it. We go up in here. The wind had been blowing like this out of the south. One of these big fronts that we've got coming, same thing. Those Chinooks, whoo, blowing hard, 25, 30, a couple days before. I got up in here, and when you got up in here, right in here, guys, is one of our favorite little percentage triangles. The cool thing about this percentage triangle is that you've got hard rock, it's deep here, and then this rock breaks up, and then it turns to sand. So I've got a triangle with a transition. Perfect. I got the wind been driving into it all day for the last couple days. We get up in there and tie up the drop shot. And there's a lot of guys that troll right here. Troll this whole, this, this is a long stretch in here. They troll this right here. We get up in there. We throw in and immediately start catching fish. 
and we get right up next to the shoreline in there and we throw right, I mean, throw the drop shot right up on the beach almost. And we start working it off, shaking it. Wham! I mean, right offshore. Boom. When you got up next to the shoreline, you know those little mice and shrimp? They can't really swim that well. You hear about bait getting blown into some place. Well, they float around with the current. Well, what happens is those guys were just packed up in here. They look like just millions of like little ants down in there. Just all over the place. All the pine needles and trashes up in there. All we did was go back and forth here. I mean, these are small spots, guys. This is maybe be, maybe 120 yards of shoreline. This spot you're fishing right here is maybe 80 yards of shoreline. Back and forth. We'd fish this, come over here, hit this, while these fish are relaxing, and come back over. Back and forth. By the end of the day, all these boats that were trolling out here were now right in my back door. Because they see Dad and I and Mike two, three fish at a time. What you're going to find, these fish you catch right up in here, they're much larger. Much larger than what you're going to catch out here trolling. Because there's more food pushed up into here. Now, the thing you need to keep in mind is that you may come into here, and this was wind blowing, okay? And I'm going to tell you, this is right across the way. I'm going to tell you what happened here. This is wind blowing. So any time in that time frame, because the trout can be up shallow because the water is what? Well, it's cooling down, correct? It's trying to turn over. Cooler water's mixing. Allows them to go shoreward. That's why you always troll surface stuff in the fall, because now they're using that calm water because of the turnover thing. You have to keep that always in mind, no matter what we're fishing for. They can use it all. There's oxygen all through it. All I did here was just pinpoint an area that had a lot of stuff blowing up into it. Told me there was going to be bait in there. Was that milky water? Or was it no, clear. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Yeah, there's no clay really in here. It's just all sand and rock, so it doesn't get that clay bank going. No, no, no. It doesn't ice up really down there. This was, this was in January. I believe it was like January 12th, actually. Roosevelt. Yep, down at Roosevelt. Now, if this thing starts letting out, how many of you guys have heard this? We followed the fish all the way down to where in March we were at Spring Canyon. Okay, you always hear that? Well, what happens? The current's going down, right? All the stuff that's floating in there is going down and pushing into that lower section. We're always down in that section around March, trolling planter boards, because that's where the, the highest concentration of food's at. When this thing started, we went back, well, I don't, end of January, remember that guy come walking down, Mick? Probably end of January, guys, a couple weeks after. And we went over, we caught a few fish in here, but it wasn't as good as before. And there's a hard point, and this point, it comes kind of way out like this. It's wrapping around like this, and it's doing a big old eddy in here, on that big river. Big eddy right here. We pulled up into here, I caught one that was probably 25 inches long right here and those fish were stacking in behind this point because remember wind allows them to stage up in front remember if we have an obstacle like this and the wind is pushing in this way they'll get on the front of it when the current is pushing and everything's drawing and the whole body of water is moving they need to get behind it remember that because the wind's only pushing the top part of the water so there's less fight with the wind so they'll stage in front Current moving, they stage behind. Same principle at this point. When this thing starts wrapping around, all that feed in here is going and getting trapped in this eddy, which they're staging in behind. They're using it as a current break. Tons of food in here. Different from wind blowing over here. Wasn't as many fish here as here. You understand the difference with the current? Put them behind. Wind blew everything up in here. Now it's moving the body of water. Did you see the fish in your uh, uh, We were casting, Brian, up into the shore. You know, the boat's sitting in about probably 35, 40 feet, and all those fish are sitting right up on the shore. Basically, you're the for the well, no, that's the planer board stuff's coming up, Kenny. This is all just casting shoreline. I don't, I don't troll to find them because I'm fishing shorelines. Well, that, that one shore you had where you guys all day long and then. You probably dawned on you after you looked back a couple of times when you passed over those areas. Well, it was, that was when we'd come into the, the, all the stuff that was floating. 
That's what I'm asking. That's, yeah. That was when we come in all the stuff that was floating. So this is separate. From that. No, no, it's the same thing. That's the same thing. Same thing.